What is going on, everybody? Brent Abel Jr. here. Goldballhunting.com. Happy New Year, January 1st, 2020. We're not looking back, man. We're not doing any hindsight this year at all. We are looking forward. And so uh, hang on with us. Hang in with us today <laughs> because that's my goal for 2020 is to speak English somewhat properly. Uh, could be a big goal. <laughs> I could bail out by the 5th yes. of January. I, I speak English goodly. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, um, I'm going to lay on you one of my goals for tennis uh, this year uh, in this episode. So hang in there with us because um, maybe you can relate. So the big question is this, how are tennis players like us who never played in the tour, weren't incredible juniors, or maybe got a late start to the game, how do we consistently compete at our highest skill level without having to grind through endless hours of encore practice time and still be in the hunt for victory match after match? That is the question, and Gold Ball Hunting gives you the answers by helping you eliminate your skill level range so that you build a strong foundation of confidence. My name is Brent Abel, and along with my biz partner, Jeff Jacklich, welcome to Gold Ball Hunting. Well, Jeffrey, my man, I uh, hope you survived last night, New Year's Eve. Uh, Maya and I went out to uh, the Shadow Mountain, I guess it's Country Club, with a bunch of our old fart friends. I think, well, I know she was the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> I might have been the second youngest, which is, wow. Um, <laughs> no, we had a good time. We met up with some with some great old friends there. And, uh, but as it is with this age group on New Year's Eve, um, uh, in bed by 9, 10. Nice. You know, get over there at 6. <laughs> you, know, it, 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 you know, she said, everyone, you know, Lisa said, well, you know, get here by 6. Dinner. I said, okay, so we get there by 6. Place is already sold out. I'm going, what? what is everyone worried <laughs> that if they don't get there by six, that they'll be falling asleep too late or something. So <laughs> anyway, no, we had a, we had a really, really, really nice dinner over there. It's fun, fun to see the, those, those guys and uh, got home safe and sound. How about you? Yeah. Kind of flew under the radar. met some friends out at a local uh, restaurant, um, hung at the bar, had some bar, bar food and uh, oh, cocktail there. And then, um, then Good. back home by nine ish, Good. And, you know. Yeah. Again, under the radar. Yeah. It was great. Right. It was great. Don't want to play with the amateurs on New Year's Eve, that's for sure. No. No, absolutely not. You want to stay, stay away. away from the the lemmings. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and the wannabe, the wannabe yeah. leaders. Forcing um, New Year's Eve to be, you know, a, a, oh, the greatest night of the year. Right. right, okay. right. <laughs> God, I love you, Brian. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, yesterday's episode, Jeff, we talked about you know, goals and stuff like that. What do you want to do? Right. Now, we, we sort of jokingly said 2020, well, you know, we're not doing hindsight. We're only looking forward. And, you know, we talked a little bit about, actually, I sort of brought up the James Clear thing about the book with Atomic right. Habits. And one of the things that helps me is to, is to kind of, if, if I'm going to do a workout to set the clothes out, because if I see the clothes, I know I got to put them on and go. But, but that's easier than trying to convince myself to, yeah. Um, <clears throat> to have to do the whole thing. So one of the things I want to do with my game this year is I want to do, we've, we've talked so much about Mark Vines in the last couple of months. Right. And um, one of the things that, you know, I ask guys questions like when they're watching a Mark Vines match or they're watching a, a Jimmy Parker match. I mean, the guys who are at the top of their age groups, I say, well, you know, what does Mark know? What does Jimmy know that that other guy who's really good, Right. What does he maybe know that the other guy doesn't? And the one thing I see with Mark is, uh, and we might have alluded to it yesterday um, when I was talking about Glenn Erickson, who's the tennis director, head pro over at the Palm Springs Tennis Club. And when I worked with Glenn for, yeah, maybe about, probably had about eight, nine, 10 sessions with him in the spring of, I guess that was spring of 2018. Um, and the, and the one thing that kept coming up every time I was in the court with him was the three C's that we always coach in our, right. in our private webinars, which is number one, clarity. And number two is he calls it, uh, Glenn calls it commitment. So the clarity part is if you 
a return and serve, for example, in your deduced court. And with me, what he was saying is if you get a second serve and it's over to your forehand, you've got complete and utter clarity of what you are going to do with this ball. And you're just going to, you're just going to give it a nice ride over to that part of the court. Doesn't matter anything else that's going on. Doesn't matter what the score is. Doesn't matter anything else. You're just going to do this thing. And he would say, now you got your clarity of what you want to do. Now, once the second serve is actually sitting there, you got to be committed to doing it. But I think another way of saying committed would be um, conviction, convicted. And one thing I see with Mark Vines, and I was watching some of his, one of his matches this morning um, against Toby Crable, was how convicted he is with, with his swing. Once he decides what he's going to do, there's no, there's, right. there's no second thought. It's just, and he's pretty firm with everything. I mean, it's not crazy. Yeah. He's not thinking power. I don't think as much as just I'm firmly going through this ball. And, and then the third thing is, is courage because you're going to have clarity sometime. Well, you're going to have clarity. You're going to have the commitment slash conviction, and you're going to lose a point. You're going to miss a shot or lose a point. But you've got to have the courage to keep coming back and trying right. that thing that you've got clarity on. So I went out today with my buddy Owen and, uh, you know, we did our thing in the grass, which we warm up for a while and we play points. And, and one of the things I did in the warm up was try to get a feeling of every ball that, that, that came to me. I just said, I'm going to be super convicted with my swing here. And, and again, it's not like I'm just gripping and ripping. I'm just real firm with going through the ball. And, um, and, and then it was sort of interesting trying to transfer over the warm-up, that feeling that you get in warm-up, where you can do it on every ball in the warm-up. Right. I mean, I guess that's how, you know, Fed felt when he was three years old, you know. I mean, <laughs> you know. And, uh, but, then, but then the big challenge is can you actually do it once the point starts? And, yeah. and so that, that, that was kind of my whole goal today. And, and uh, I, felt, I felt really good today. So I guess all that said, my goal, or I should say one, I shouldn't say goal, but one of the habits I want to continue to develop every time on the court is that Glenn Erickson thing, which is the clarity uh, and then the conviction to, to execute the clarity. Yeah. And then look, and just, just the realization that you're going to miss some, or you can thump right. it, but the guys there and, you know, ends up winning the point it doesn't mean that you're going to go you know go oh, i'm going to go to plan you know l well it, it 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 doesn't mean that you didn't construct the point well it doesn't mean that it's not the right play still i mean that's i think a lot of players lose their conviction you know when they they feel like they've done everything right and they lose the point and and then they they use the loss of the point as the barometer for good bad right or wrong and they miss all the good stuff they did leading up to that moment and really what they have to get over is that moment of of you've, you've now got this you know the conviction of the last shot basically right the passing shot or whatever you're, you've chosen and then not moving that shot into another um kind of emotional state other than i'm just i'm convicted i'm going to do this here it is and then I, I take it as it comes after that. Um, well, then and, moving into and, that, like where I've created the open court and I better hurry up and get the ball over there. And that, and that's where a lot of stuff goes south, you know? So I, you know, what, so that clarity is I, 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 I struck the ball well. And, in, you know, in the, in the, in the first two or three balls of constructing the point, here's the opportunity. I hit a good ball. It didn't turn out my way. Okay. Do it again. And the conviction to go back and do it again, you know, and, and really test that, you know, your well, opponent. Yeah. And, and kind of for, for, for me today, there were a couple of times when I had real clarity of what I wanted to do, convicted, committed to doing it and then missed the shot. And I went to your thing, which is we'll monitor and adjust. And I kind of evaluated, well, what could I have done differently uh, on that? It wasn't so much shot choices. It was just, it was always, it was always either just aim a little higher over the net next time, just just raise your target, or bring your target in from that sideline. 
it was, it was right. never anything to do with the baseline ever. It was, it was always either one right. of those two things. It was all right. You're, you're just flirting with the top of the net. Just, just too much. And you don't need to do that. And you're flirting with that sideline just a little bit too much. You hit the ball well, but you got to keep it inside the court. You got to get it over the top of the net. So, um, and I want to want to make sure that guys don't misinterpret guys gals don't misinterpret what I'm saying when I'm convicted to the swing. Um, I'm just really I, I guess I guess committed is the right word too. Is is I'm committed to the swing that um, that will execute the shot I want. Right. And, and Commit, uh, committed to the to the shot choice. You've made the choice. It's clear. Yeah. To commit to it. Do it, and then. Take it from there. Yeah, I would say the last few months of last year, I was really unsure. I mean, I really had a lot of, you know, I had no clarity. It was kind of foggy. And look, I mean, right. and, and some of it was because I played a lot last year, and then we got to Croatia, did the tournament before, did the team event, and I got home. We went straight to Colorado, and all I wanted to do was never see a tennis racket. <laughs> for about 30 days right and just you know and and i i just played a lot so when i kind of got back uh when we got back down here to the desert in november it was like i sort of lost it right it's kind of you know because you're playing a lot you're having some results you're having some winning results you're either having some, and any you know losing results are super close so you're kind of kind of in the zone you know, you just have that sort of intangible confidence going. And, right. but for me, what we do is when we go to Colorado in the fall every year, I mean, I just, for me, it's like, let's lay the rackets down. Let's forget about it. Let's do something else for a while. So to refresh the batteries in terms of um, kind of getting a brand new clean slate. Um, there yeah. are other guys out there. I mean, I know other guys in my age group who they play 365 days a year. They, and it's just, like, yeah. It's like, you, I, I go, you never get burned out? No. I just love the game. <laughs> okay, well, I, I mean, I, I love, I guess I love tennis. I mean, but wow, I, I just don't have that kind of. Um, yeah. I just don't have, I, I don't know what it is. Anyway, I like to take a little time off. So I guess my point is when I, when I come back, there's always that period in November, December, where it's a little, it's a little fuzzy. I guess. Yeah. And uh, uh, anyway, I felt really good today. I, I really, really felt good today. It was fun to yeah. go out there and do that. Plus, you know, Rick, you got to see this place today. I mean, it's like 68 <laughs> degrees. There's not a wisp of wind. There's, you know, the sandwich, sandwich it's white and the grass and the contrast. And it's kind of like, card. okay, okay. If you feel at all like something's wrong with your life today, Brent, uh, right. <laughs> you are an idiot. Yeah, you can't commit to your forehand. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't want to miss. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The consequences of missing are so huge. That's right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm just gonna crumble. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Hey, Brent, how you doing? No. Well, I could complain, but you just oh. go. Shut up. For, just I shut forgot, up. Yeah, I forgot to bring my spine when I woke up today. <laughs> Uh, uh, all right so that's, 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 that's uh, good well you know for but, me but, as you're talking as you're talking go ahead go ahead well i was gonna say so what's your deal you know it's a great jim well, Harbaugh, as you're talking there you know, Harbaugh, you know pete 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 carroll thing what's your deal huh? what's your deal what's your deal yeah i you know for me as you're talking there and we talked a little bit before we started today and you know this has been a um uh a personally challenging uh you know 2019 and before was personally challenging and it 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 still is um you know a little bit between the dock and the boat at the moment um but so for me i i would i'm i'm what the word the word itself is clarity right in making daily decisions that move that that um that simply move the boat i mean i'm not even worried about making the boat go faster <laughs> <laughs> just just moving the boat and and daily doing things that um that are actionable things that move some of the projects we're doing and that kind of thing so the clarity of 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 those little things that eventually add up to big things and i think that's 
um, probably the most important thing that I can start to focus on. And well, do I, is, I is, think that's good. So many, you know, I, I think that's really good, Jeff, because I, I know for me, sometimes it's like we think, all right, well, I want this. I want the end result of the goal. Right. Right. And, and yet there are there, it's so easy for me too to go, okay, well, so let's assume the goals nine, 90 days out there. It's three, you know, it, according to, you know, the average human, it takes you about three months to achieve that result. Okay, great. And the mistake I've made is to go, okay, well, I've just done day one. Am, am I closer? You know, and then I go, I don't know. And then I go day two and, and, and am I closer? And, and finally, it's kind of like, Brent, just shut up. Just stop trying to measure every freaking moment right. on the journey. Right. You know, and, and some guys actually, you know, with, with, you know when, they, when they buy a lesson, well, if I do this, I mean, can you guarantee that, you know, I'm going to get my, my thing? And I, I just go, no, I can't guarantee anything. But what I, what I will guarantee is that if you put in the work the way that I've prescribed it, you're going to be a lot closer to that thing than where you are right now. Right. And so, yeah, you might get there faster than the prescription or it might take you a little bit longer, but if you try to measure it, that's when you get screwed up. Yeah. 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 It's that, that, yeah. I went into the you know, weight room today and I lifted. What, what, what do you mean? What, what? <laughs> it's actually what, dropping. <laughs> what's, what's, you know, and I think in tennis, you know, just as a, let's say a reminder to those, to those players out there who are, you know, have genuinely made um, some new year's resolutions or goals. And maybe those goals were already set before the end of the last year. And they're just going to continue those into, into, you know, 2020. And that is, there is a point in the development of uh, whether you're tweaking some stroke technique, whether you're trying to make your forehand bat, whatever, more efficient, you're reducing some stroke, you know, uh, you're, you're eliminating some moves that maybe don't need to be there, whatever it might be, or a new habit on the court, I'm, I'm redefining and really getting uh, more disciplined about my split step as I come into vault, whatever, you know, from the technical to the physical on the court, whatever it might be, there's always going to be a period of time when you feel like you've gotten worse before you get better and there's always a period of time where I can't go back to the way I used to hit the ball but I'm not hitting it the way I want to be hitting it and I can tell you this when you hit that moment you're close you've got to trust that moment that when you you can't quite figure out the way you used to do it and which means you're on the cusp of, of having this new thing come and you just at that moment you have to have the most discipline and the most patience to just continue doing the work because it won't just, for me anyway, in my experience in my own game, it never kind of just gradually showed up. It was do the work, do the work. I can't go back to where I came from. I know that now because I'm not even sure what that felt like, but I can't go forward. And then it was like, there it is. It was, it was like on a day when it, there it is. Yep. And then from that moment forward, it was, it was in the books, you know. So anyway, I just want to encourage everybody out there that, that there is the, that, that's, a, that's a classic time frame, you know, not a time frame, but it's a classic step by step along the way that's the way it kind of happens it happens for me i'm sure you can agree with it with be you know that where you you know it's like well how did i used to hit it well i, I don't know yeah. <laughs> thankfully I, I quite, forgot yeah yeah thankfully you forgot right but you're not quite where you'd like to be and, and all i can tell you is that 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 space as uncomfortable it is as it is is the moment where your clarity and conviction and commitment to it is most needed yeah. because you're right there. You're, you're just right there. <laughs> well, I think, you know, as I was saying, where you try to measure your improvement is where we're also the hoping that f the graph from where we're starting, you know, at the, at the, at the lower of the axis and, and we, and we're, and we're looking up here at the result and we're, we're really hoping that it's a tangible straight line. Yeah. And we can I, feel ourselves. I think we're getting, really hoping it's a uh, hockey stick, though. <laughs> it's just a mess because, well, I, I referenced George Leonard in, the, in his book Mastery from, you know, decades ago. And, and he said the learning curve, and it's really true, or, or the improvement curve, is a bunch of ups, some downs, um, some plateaus. Yeah, for sure. And he, and he says, and a lot of people, a lot of people bail out on the plateau because they don't feel any improvement. And just like you said, 
when you get stuck on a plateau, if you stay convicted and you keep going, you are just about to take another up in here. Yeah. So it's not a straight line up. It's got a whole bunch of peaks and valleys and, and flat lines in here. And, and you got to just, you just got to stick with the plan, whatever, whatever that plan is. Um, you know, we, we've got a few spots left in January. Of, it is yeah. January. Um, in coming up in just a couple of weeks here, Jeff. Um, 15 days. Yeah. So in these, we, we've got two one day workshops scheduled um, here, here in the desert, January 16th and 17th, Thursday and Friday, Friday sold out. But one of the things that, uh, and Thursday, I guess we've got a, a couple of spots left, left open. So if you're on the fence, jump off the fence and click the link below, fill out the application. Yeah. Um, but one of the things I really want to work with these guys and the gals with um, on these two one-day workshops is recognizing when they have an opponent who is compromised now with stroke technique. And generally that happens when you stretch an opponent out wide. Right. And um, or sometimes where you shank a ball, miss it, all of a sudden it's short and they were backing up anticipating because they saw the big swing. And now all of a sudden right. they're scrambling to run in and they're just barely going to get to it. And what I, I think one of the one of the key things is for us to teach and coach these guys and gals on when that's happening so that they change their core position because. Um, it just happens way too often. I see it all the time in both singles and in doubles where whether it's intentional or not. And I right. would say probably a lot of the time it's unintentional where you right. get a guy stretched out. I mean, sometimes you can hit a, just a standard ball to a corner um, where if, and, and, and the opponent was right in the middle between the two extreme angles, but for whatever reason, they thought it looked like you were going to go in the other direction. And now they've wrong footed themselves just one step. And you've right. got to be smart enough and aware enough to realize that you had nothing to do with it. All that you did is hit a standard rally ball over there. And they kind of, they kind of wrong footed right. themselves. And then you go, Oh, and you've got to come in and you just got to assume they're not going to do much right. with the shot and you got to be able to rob them in time. So that's one of the things I really want to help these guys and gals with. Um, coming up here soon is, is recognizing right. Awareness, right. Just awareness of, of what, of time. how much, how much pain have you or have not inflicted yep. intentional or not is irrelevant. That's right. It's, it's, are you aware in the moment of how much pain you've inflicted or how much you haven't? Yeah. And, and, and pain, pain really means that they're typically stretched out or, or they're, they're in a lousy court position now. And your whole job is, well, what can I do to rob them of the time to get out of that lousy court position? And you kind of hope when they're in that lousy court position that they give you pace. You yeah. know, they're, 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 they're kind of thinking, well, I'm, I'm, I'm out here. I'm, I'm kind of hung out to dry. I better go for it. And fine. Right. If they want to, if they want to luckily go up the line, that one inch or luckily, you know, go across court, fine and dandy. Chances are 99 of a hundred, eh, not going to happen. And so you hope that they give you pace because then you got the ball and they're still stuck out there. And the bunt volley to the open court is yes. like, <laughs> like you can take your cell phone and just go, oh, boom. Uh, take take your racket in both hands. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So guys, look, uh, again, if you're on the fence on, on this, uh, or if you don't, the first time you've heard about these workshops, down below this video, there's two links. Number one to the uh, workshop information video, go check it out. Uh, if you already know that you want in, go click the link for the application. So, uh, because we are vetting everyone to make sure we can put them in the exact perfect group. Uh, <coughs> Jeff, anything else before we uh, sign off? I think, that's a, I think that's a wrap. What do we want to find folks to do right now, Jeff, on the first like day it. of January of 2020? Really like us. Oh. <laughs> really like it Ugh. subscribe yeah let us know what you think down below mm. down there itunes and stitcher rate and review Bumpsky. don't just like us though if you, if you like us though but you don't subscribe you know i mean it seems silly that you can't make that extra jump with the finger just click click <laughs> like like subscribe oh <laughs> goldballhunting.com Invite really your fun. friends, really. This is, this is just going to get better. Yeah, yeah. It's a new year. We're looking forward. Guys, there it is.
Get out there today. Help someone else have a spectacular day. Happy New Year, everybody. Be safe out there. Jeff will do this again tomorrow. Can't wait.